Hi everyone, Terry from Introverted Games, and in this video we're going to explore one main concept. Why in the heck does my player always fall through the world floor, through my game level, through my scene? Why does it just keep falling forever and not stop where I want it to? This is a big problem and I can't wait to help you solve it. This particular issue in video game development has two distinct ways to solve it. Uh, one way I would personally say is better than the other way, but this is game development and there's no wrong answer. At the end of the day, we're just trying to get games out there for people to play. The first method to solve this issue is arguably not as good as the second method. However, this is quick, it's very easy, and it does work. Now let's assume that you've gone on the Unity Asset Store and you've gotten a free asset pack. It comes with some sample levels and it looks amazing. You set up your player and when you hit play, you're presented with an issue such as this. Your player just falls right through. Now, the quickest, by far quickest and easiest way to fix this is to add primitive colliders to your game. Box colliders, poly colliders, whatever you prefer, that will stop the player from falling, and I'm going to show you how to do that. However, there's one super important thing that you have to remember. If you forget this key element, then no amount of colliders will work for you. Either the simple collider or the player must have a rigid body. When you have two objects in Unity, they both have colliders, and you want those two objects to interact and collide with each other, at least one of those objects must have a rigid body. All right, so let me show you the first way to do this. You have your level here, and arguably this is a pretty level. This is a free asset pack from the Unity Asset Store. It's called 2D Stone Age World. And if you go download that asset, you're gonna have a level much like this. However, the coding, the character controller, the camera follow, none of that's included. I've written all of that. It's just an art asset. All right, let me stop rambling. <laughs> what you would do is you would right click and a really easy way to do this is just to add a 2D object and we'll just say a sprite for now and we'll say a square. Now that's just to get an object in the world that you can see because you wanna be able to see these to start with. All right, we're gonna add a component and we're gonna go ahead and add a box collider to this. And make sure if you're making a 2D game that you add a box collider 2D. The 2D box colliders are designed to work with the 2D rigid bodies and of course a 2D game. There are some caveats if you're doing say a 2.5D game. All right. We're going to go ahead and click on the Rect tool, and that allows us to shape and scale this object. Now remember, there's a collider on this object, which is beautiful. Now, if you don't need the white box, and just the outline of the collider is enough for you, then you can go ahead and take the white box off to begin with. However, we're making a video and I want to make certain that you can see what I'm doing. You just drag this down here. Make sure that the edge of this object lines up exactly where you want the feet of your player to be. So just about like that. Okay, and then let's duplicate this by hitting Control D. Let's take the second one Let's move it over here, and let's go ahead and rotate this one. This is your rotate tool, makes it real easy. You just click your left mouse button, you hold it, and you spin, 
we're just trying to match the rotation and the angle of the terrain. Then we're going to take our move tool and we're just going to move it down and of course we're going to make sure that it lines up and you don't want this little piece sticking out up here so you want to move this down just a little bit. Now for sake of making a 10 hour video I'm not going to do every collider in this level I'm just going to show you. Now once you're happy well heck I'll do one more <laughs> since the first one is already at a 90 instead of having to re-rotate I'll just duplicate the first one again and I'll drag that over here to the beginning now you notice it's not quite long enough and so what do we do guys that's right good job we're gonna click on the rect tool and we're going to resize it just like that. You're so smart. Look at you. You're becoming a great video game developer already. You just don't know it. <laughs> now we're going to move this down. There we go. It fits perfect. Now once you're happy with the position, you want to hold your shift key and click like that on your squares. Let me repeat that for you. You click on one of your squares hold your shift key and click on the top one. Now what this does, this allows you to collect multi, to not collect, but select <laughs> multiple objects in a row. Did you see that? So if I click on the bottom object, hold shift and click on the top one, it selects all of them. So that being said, there is an alternative. Let's say that square two is up here and square one is up here. Who knows why, but it could be like that. What you would do in that instance is you would hold the control key on your keyboard and you would click on each individual item that you want to select. Great easy way to multi-select things, right? Let me organize this again. And here's a pro tip. If you're going to do a bunch of colliders like this, it's perfectly fine. It does work. What I would do is make an empty object and I would name it colliders and I would just drag all of those objects into there that just is for ease of organization and then you can just collapse or you know collapse it and you don't have to look at all of them all right so select all of your collider objects and just click on sprite renderer oh and look at this immediately we can see a problem okay you see how right here this collider goes down and this one doesn't go all the way over so there's a gap and the player's going to get stuck right there that's one of the main re one of the many reasons this method isn't the best but we can just extend it out and see there we go now if we hit play you will notice that this does work there we go the player's sitting right there on the colliders he can walk I mean, as, as a player, I have no idea that you did that in your game. Okay, the end user isn't going to know that you did the colliders this way. Now, do I condone this method? No, not really. <laughs> okay? The next method I want to touch upon uses the built-in collider system for the 2D tile map in Unity. Now this system is relatively easy to use and if you ask me it's a lot more performant. If you look in front of you you'll see there's a whole nother level than what you saw a couple seconds ago. What was instant for you was about 20 minutes for me. I mocked this level up with a tile map for you. And I'm sure you're pretty aware what tile maps are if you're making games. If not we have them right here. Grid and I have several tile maps for layers and let me bring this over here this would be the palette that I would use to actually draw things on the screen so if I go over to ground palette we have all of the ground items that we have on the scene now you'll notice that some things are different colors now let me show you how to do that most good tile maps come pure white like this so that you can change the colors for, you know for your preference and so the one tile map 
can actually be multiple levels. You know, I can make a winter scene, a desert scene, all kinds of scenes with these same assets. So what you would do if you want to change the color is click on ground and this right here is the tile map color. And what that does is turns the white right here into this more of a brickish color. Now you'll notice that the top part is white. That's supposed to be snow. This came from the winter uh, tile set. And we have a, a couple different palettes also. We have deco, like I said, for rocks. And then we also have ground accent and ground overlay. Now these are the same exact tile maps, they're just in layers. That's how I can have this part be white instead of the gray because it's essentially a different tile map. It is the ground overlay which is white. Now this down here is actually ground accent because I needed to overlay this tile over this part of the world and if you overlay a tile from the same tile map, let me in fact just show you. So let's switch to the ground palette. Now let's say that I want this. You see how it's partly transparent? Okay, if I click that and I want to draw in my world, you'll notice that right here it doesn't show transparent. Some places it does, some places it doesn't. It's because of the level, the layer. <laughs> so if we go to ground, uh, ground instead of ground accent and we try and draw, you'll notice that we have a blue area behind there. That's because it's on the same layer as ground and so it just shows the background and not the tile behind it. Then if we change to ground overlay, it's the same exact tile map, but just a different layer. And now you'll notice that you can see the tile behind it. And I'm going to show you how to set that up also. I hope that you're following along. This is kind of a lot to consume, and it's not really part of this tutorial per se, but the tile map system is pretty powerful for 2D games. Now let's say that, so ground is on layer one. And if you look, ground overlay is on layer two. That means I, it'll show whatever on layer one behind it. And then ground accent is also on layer two. So that anything on layer one will show behind that layer. I hope that makes sense to you. Now, the fix for being able to walk on tile maps is so easy. Ground is, of course, our ground layer. What you do is add component and you add a tile map collider 2D. And you're done. <laughs> That's pretty much all, all you have to do. You hit play. Come on, compile baby. And bam, you can now walk on the tile map. I don't, oh there we go. My player controller's a little messed up, but there you go. Oh, <laughs> there we go. My player controller's not messed up. I have my hands on the wrong keys. <laughs> Everybody makes mistakes. So there you go. That's mm -hmm. nice and simple. But what I do want to show you mm -hmm. is you see this platform in the middle here? Mm -hmm. That is not done with the tile map. That is actually a prefab right here and it has a polygon collider. Now, if you remember the first part of this tutorial, because my player has a rigid body, I can interact with this collider and therefore I have a moving platform. So you draw your level really quick and easy, you add colliders and then you add your platforms. And let, let me show you one more thing. You'll kind of see what I'm talking about. So, you know, right here on ground, Ground is the only layer that has a tile map collider 2D. Now, if you remember me telling you, this area right here is ground overlay. And there is no tile, there is no collider on there. And that's fine because I put a damage zone right here. 
And that's just a box collider with a script that hurts you and there's a safe spot right next to it. So if you get hurt, you just spawn at that safe spot. If you would like a tutorial about that, I would be more than happy to make you one. Just comment down below. If you like my videos, please comment. And if you gain any value from these at all, please consider liking and subscribing. I hope that I have detailed how to fix this problem for you. If you need more help, feel free and join the Discord or comment down below. I appreciate you, and I can't wait to see the amazing games you're going to make. Thanks so much for watching my video. Have a great day.